You are now listening to For All Nerds Show, a podcast about geek and pop culture from the perspective of people of color. For All Nerds is hosted by DJ Ben Amin and Tatiana Keen Jones. For All Nerds Show is a member of the Loudspeakers Network, where we always say rest in peace to our founder, Combat Jack. For All Nerds Show is powered by our listeners. Everything we do from our podcasts, live events, our website are all independently funded. Please continue to support us through our Patreon page at patreon.com slash for all nerds. Welcome to the For All Nerds Show. And what's up, y'all? And welcome to this very special episode of the For All Nerds Show. The voice of Urban Geek will read, discuss geek and pop culture according to the perspective of people of color. And as always in the captain's chair, it's your boy DJ Ben I mean, aka Scott Stunners, Professor Next, the Off White King, Mr. Finisher, RIP to Mr. C. Here in the spaceship tonight. Wow. Mr. Finisher. That was the one. That was the one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here in the spaceship tonight, and as always, as you heard by her illustrious voice, I'm joined by Tatiana King, the Grand Duchess of Tech, also known as Tatiana Kang, the Conqueror, the coldest winter soldier ever, Doc Aki, Tesseract Thompson, T'Challa Bread, Faxer Destroyer, and Scroll Obsidian. And I'm going to keep it short this week because we have a, some special guests today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, we do. We have two very special guests, and I'll let them both introduce themselves. They are professionals, as they say. Well, it's uh, Rod and Karen from the Blackout Test Podcast. Yes. Uh, Karen, uh, did you do AKs? Or? I got two. Okay, okay. Uh-oh. I, Let's I, go. I, I was kind of prepared. I normally suck at this. I want <laughs> them people that you be like, oh, you want me to dance, child? No. You know, type of thing. So... Um, my AKAs is AKA Crip Walking Professor X, oh. AKA It's Big Me Storm. Yeah, I just had two, y'all. I, I, I couldn't go no further than two. I love it. It's I love ain't mad at it. That's the Crip Walking Professor. Now you know you dead ass wrong for that. One. <laughs> that is terrible. <laughs> you terrible. dead ass wrong for that one, but I love it. Uh, and for me, I had uh, Rod, Rod Morrow, AKA Doctor Hank McRib, because I'm back. Kamala Universal Fan Con, Professor Flex Xavier, Ronan the Reclusive, Magnus the Stallion, because it's about to be a Scott Boy Summers. <laughs> Embrace me when you see me in real life, because I'm the hugger not, bitch. Kendrick Shiar, happy to be back, guys. Thank, <laughs> thanks for having me. Wow. Never this is why I go first. <laughs> Never I'm done with the AKAs. Every Never. time you're here, Rod, you just go hard. Like... <laughs> You won. You got it. Yeah, the amount Kendrick, of time I spend are. thinking wow. about this is a lot. I wow. think about <laughs> like God sometimes I have to do them on the fly. But y'all gave me some advance notice today. I was I said I got them. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I did all it. these on the fly, and you you know because I needed some new X Men ones because I hadn't had any X Men ones. So I, had to flip I, it. I listened to the last show and I was like, man, I don't hear the X Men ones. I, yeah. I knew y'all was gonna bring it. Yep. Yeah. So here we okay. are. But we are back with. As you heard from me and Rod's X Men influence, AKAs, to review X Men 97, mm-hmm. episode six. I don't know the title of this one. Life I did Death not check. Part Two. Oh, what am I talking about? Fucking hell. Yes, I know the title of this one. <laughs> you know, like, come on, fam. Life Death Part Two, which is based on Life Death Part Two from the comics and a bunch of other comics, uh, some of Chris Claremont's and Jim Lee's run. Uh, of course, the fallout from Genosha continues in this. Back. So that's Grant Morrison and mm-hmm. Frank Quietly's new X Men, mm-hmm. and then of course the remix that X Men '97 has been doing, you know, throughout this series so far, season. Yeah, yeah. Woo. Let's. We gotta start from the beginning. This is yeah. so sad. I'm still depressed from last week. Mm. My nigga Gambit gone. Mm. He took My, that L. Take me with him, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> they took that nigga out the opening. Too. They took him out the opening, and that's when you know it's real. When they take them niggas out, mm-hmm. and when I they had that sad piano version playing at the end yes. of the last episode. Oh yeah, you uh, knew it was over. Oh, uh, I said they killed him for real. Like, that's what I'm saying, and, and that <laughs> that's what hurt me the most. Like I was like, nah, he come back, he will come back. This nigga I, is I, gone. 
I'll tell you when I really knew, like, the opening, you know, is a fake out. Because I still know Magneto going to be back in that opening at some point. Yeah. But when that nigga, Professor Ed, saw that nigga dead, that's what I was that like. one tear. <laughs> I was like, that out of one everybody, tear. out of everybody, right. he sees damn it being mm-hmm. dead. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, no, this nigga dead, dead. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, he, no, we <laughs> He I might know not he, come I back didn't know this he messed season. with him like that. You would have yeah, thought he would have got like, pictures of like everybody and <laughs> no. any, anyone else. Well, well, and honestly, the thousands that got killed in Genosha. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, no. Any of None them. of them. None of them. You this said, like, damn it. it. <laughs> <laughs> get me a, give me a direct flight right now. <laughs> oh, y'all not killed my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> like immediately. And, and yes, Magneto's not in the open no more, but as you said, Ben. Right. They, <laughs> he grabbed all of them. He didn't even cry over Magneto. He right. didn't see Ben Magneto he, photo. He know Magneto I. Because he know it, Magneto I. Let's let's be true. true. Remember true, true. at the end of last at the end of our review or recap yes. last week we had mentioned that we, there's a potential that Magneto ain't dead. There's some right. oh, potential power ain't. transfer that happened between him mm-hmm. and, and Reek and, and uh, you know Leech. All this. Leech, Leech, not Reek. Yeah. Sorry, Leech. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I, I <laughs> said it and heard it and said it anyway. Not Leech. Reek. <laughs> uh, Reek. <laughs> the potential some potential power transfer and, and maybe there was some mm. saving or some disbursement of energy. Who the fuck knows, okay? Yeah, he he alive. Yeah. But Damn but ain't. It's fucked up. But who do we have <laughs> who do we have now in the opening? Nightcrawler. Mm-hmm. Kurt Wagner. Kurt Wagner. Mm-hmm. So I mean that's good, right? No? The excitement oh, yes. ain't oh, there. <laughs> I love, I love him. I just got his Marvel Legends up on the shelf last week. Love him. Like, I mean, I, mean I'm a, I count him as I count him as like you know black inclusion representation. Okay. Word up, word okay. up. You know, Bam. not part not part of the monotone family. Exactly. Oh, we got to explain what that means. He down with the cause. <laughs> He'll yeah, watch and I protest. You know. Yeah, I right. I I'll, I'll slide with that. I mean, definitely. Cause that nigga walked down the street and it gets hate. Like yeah. he got it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah he got and it. He like, stands. Yeah. Yeah, and he, he like it. super yeah. religious in the in the kind of way people should be religious. Not True, the, indeed. Not the American way, but the like. Oh, you mean like the mm-hmm. We gotta religion? help people. Yeah, yes. we gotta. Yes. So I, I count him. He down. You know, mm-hmm. like you pick and choose what parts of the Bible you are gonna follow. So yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, now yeah, it would yeah. be funny if he started like a Baptist church instead of the one he always started in the X Men books. <laughs> I would I would pay money to see him <laughs> give a get a catch the Holy Ghost and start pathing around the uh, congregation. <laughs> oh boy, I did a black wedding this um weekend <laughs> and the speeches went on for forty minutes. Oh shit! <laughs> Let me tell you, people was dead quiet through all of them. They were I was in tears. I had to go in the back and wipe my eyes, folks. It was a black wedding. There was, one of the brothers from, there was from HU. Mm. You know, there we go. So you know, so you know, the man spoke. So you know, when the H U brother speaks, so you're you gonna know respect I mean? that, but everybody what? else to hell with them. I no, I mean, all, no, everyone there was fine. <laughs> let, me, let, let me lay it down. That's what I'm saying. If Kurt Wagner was up in there, he would have got up and spoke the same yeah, way. But that nigga would have that nigga would have spoke for fucking an hour thirty. Let's oh yeah, you know that. Kurt talking. You know, and, and, he and you know what? On. This re- episode just remind me how long winded a lot of the X Men had been. And like I said, I don't yeah. remember it being like that when I was a kid. But I was like, God damn, like nigga, just say what it is you got to say and get the fuck on. Like, because we it, adults, we like we got shit to do. They could talk. Yeah, niggas, we talk. All right, so I will say I liked how this episode, and just this is like just the setup of this episode. I liked how it bounced back and forth between Professor X story mm-hmm. and Storm story. I thought that was well balanced. I did appreciate the, and they had a lot of parallels too, and a lot of nuances mm-hmm. where they were sometimes talking about the same exact thing just in their perspective. Right. And mm-hmm. I appreciated that. I thought that was very smart. Colonizers. <laughs> That's. <it. Yeah. laughs> I mean, like to me, the episode like. And like the, upon the first watch, I was like, "Damn, this is a little heavy-handed," but at no. the same time, I'm like, "It needs to be because yep. people don't get it." So the second time I watched it, I was like, "No, this isn't even." While it can be very direct, there were so many ooh 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 jabs where mm. I was like, "Ooh ooh," mm. I was dancing with him on the second watch. So yeah, no, it was a, <laughs> it was a fantastic episode, especially after the tragedy of everything of last week. You needed. Like resistance, you needed hope. Mm-hmm. You needed, you know, fuck the colonizers. So mm-hmm. that was great for me. And they yeah. still put us through it. Like, oh yeah, yes. they did. They didn't, they didn't come back and go, oh, here's some light work. It's st- it was like, no, here's some heart rending emotional. 
Stuff. Here's some mm-hmm. nightmare inducing shit, nigga. Like that shit was terrifying. I, I, like, I was thank you for saying the word. I was gonna say the adversary is terrifying. Terrifying. Yes. And like yeah. on all, all them them Chucky doll shit that the terrifying. shit was doing, it was too much for me. When it jumped back, want that. When they jumped at her coming when it was going through the portal yeah. and it was being sent away and they jumped in her face real quick. <laughs> I said, oh, and you see that? <laughs> like, I was what like, the I didn't make fit for that. No, but, but I, I the Okay, it's just so, I think what makes this series so good is the fact that they can play around and and really adeptly bounce between even genres within mm-hmm. the stories. Like, right. they do it so well, and it's like, how the fuck are y'all doing this? But in a way that, like you said, it, it may, like, the message may seem heavy-handed, but then when you really, truly watch it and give it the space it needs to give, you're just like, no, they fucking did this very smartly. I got a question for y'all. Yeah. I feel like this, just as a creative, as a writer, I feel like this, and I even saw um, Mr. DeMaio speaking about it on Twitter. Go DeMaio, yep. It's a benefit to me of animation, right? It's the same thing with look at uh, with the Spider-Verse films. Mm-hmm. Like, the benefit of animation that I, I don't know of any live action thing that I've seen that has that ability to jump between genres or even theme and mood so right. rapidly. Yeah. Like animation can do. You know, yeah. and I don't know if that's just a benefit of animation. And that's why I'm asking y'all if there's any, and I also ask the listeners, all the viewers out there, if there's any live action film, TV series, whatever, that jumps like that the way animation, because Spider Verse did the same thing to me. It'd be horrific one moment, yeah. mm-hmm. you'd be crying in that moment. Then you're cheering, you know, with joy the next moment. Then you're yeah. laughing. Yeah. I, I'm i sure there is an example, but I can't think of one right now. And <laughs> and, and, the, and the reason for that, I do feel like as animation, as a genre, we allow the impossible. We, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. We, we understand, like, we, yeah. we naturally mm-hmm. just expect, yep. hey, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Yes. Because... Is yeah. that it, it's art? It, it's art and movement, right? Not to say that yeah. everything else is not art, but this is this is moving visuals, right? Yeah. Versus when you see a real live person standing there, it's just like if a real live person. If right now I went from being mad happy to mad scared or mad this, you'd be like, "Are you schizo?" Right? Like you mm-hmm. you would ask, "Is something going mm. on?" With you? And I think it's a it's you a, expect it in animation. You kind of expect yeah. that, mm-hmm. the, as I mentioned, it's expected impossible. You expect that it can jump a bit. And a lot of times, when it. live action does it, a lot of times people don't like it. And they reject it. So, like, even, reject if it. The, even if they did do it, it's like, well, that's a terrible movie. And it's like, well, they was trying to do what you do with animation. Nah, right. There you and, go. And, yeah. and, and you missed the point. I think, and this is just me, I think one of the closest things to it, and it gets knocked a lot, is mm. the Marvel the Marvel series. Not individual movies, but if you look at it in its totality, mm. Marvel took us through it. We went from mm-hmm. happy to joy to winning to losing to loss to death. Mm-hmm. You know, because at the end game, you mm. know, people were crying, people were dealing with lo- like they touched a lot of different topics. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's one of the few things I can think of that's like live action that people kind of allowed themselves to get soaked into. But I got, I got two. Okay, go ahead, and then I want to respond to Karen. But go ahead. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Ooh, that, oh, okay. That, that's a really good that's one. A great yes, that's animation. That was, yeah, that's yeah, live yeah, action animation. That's yep. a that's a perfect one. And mm-hmm. then um, the TV show Legion was really Ooh. good at, at at doing this kind of shit. Okay. I don't know how many people Ooh. like got into it or, or watched it, but it was I it was real. It. it was almost jarring sometimes because you'd be like, "Wait, yeah." What? <laughs> like, Legion like, was good at doing everything. And it yeah, was so bro. good at doing things that it was like, it, it was ahead of its time. It, it's like, it was really way, smart. Yeah, way ahead of its re- time. Really way smart. ahead of its time. It's, yeah, it was, um, yeah, I will, I'll, I'll agree with both of those. And Karen, I think even the Marvel stuff, like Thor, while I thought, what is it, Love and Thunder went way over the top, I felt like a lot of people thought Ragnarok was even over the top. Mm-hmm. But it does that thing where it's all, you know, Astar gets yes. blown up. Horrible yeah. moment. He Here's a the joke. Death. He got sad. He yep. was depressed. People yeah. overlooked, overlooked mm-hmm. yeah, that. But it was mm-hmm. happy and mm-hmm. jokes. And, and yeah, every scene, even though it connected, every scene could have been its own, like, short sketch. You mm-hmm. know, like. <laughs> yep. Get it. Um, who Whose story do we start with at this point? Like, oh. Char- Ch- Charles or Storm? Charles. Charles, yeah, we'll get the story. <laughs> let's start. Let's start with this uh, funny ass white man. 
this <laughs> this is the funniest nigga alive, the funniest white nigga alive I ever seen. Like, and it was so interesting because, of course, this is the first time we've seen him from the beginning of X Men ninety seven, and like the voice that mm. I was like, okay, completely dead on to what mm. I remember. I was like, that's that nigga. Um, this man, I didn't know he was so like sarcastic. I didn't realize mm. that. Like, I didn't catch it until this time around. And I'm like, this nigga's a motherfucker. Like, dead ass. Like, just the shit that he was saying, he would catch people and he would read people, like, without even them realizing what was going on. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he was always like that towards Logan, especially in yes. the comics. As Cyclops, mm. like, they come in complaining about the other one. He just be low key sarcastically reading them the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was like, and the thing with Charles is like, I have smoke for Charles because mm. I got smoke for him too. Yeah. You know, like I, I respect you know what he's trying to do. I'm more of a Magneto type of guy, but mm. I respect what Charles is trying to do. But bro, you was finna throw it all away for for a chick for some mm-hmm. for some. You done are- with the struggle? He's going mm-hmm. away from Shiar pussy. Let's be true. Bro, you walking about. like is I've she putting it on you like that? <laughs> right? He went Both legs Shia. moving. Like he, like he, he, like he's walking. He ready to have his memory erased. He never come. Put your put your mama on the phone. He's <laughs> never coming home. Like, bro, what kind of marriage is this? I don't. It seems like a good one, you know. Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, this man finna forget everyone he ever knew, hey, forget right. his best friend's but, memory. But you know so, what? Hey, sometimes it, it gotta be like that. <laughs> it, took, <laughs> it can never be like that. <laughs> it took him going back to the ground and losing them legs, but he be like, you know what, bitch? I got powers. Boop boop. Y'all come in here yeah. with me. Right, like, like this, like, come on, man! This nigga got to walk again. Like, you know what that means? I, I so, know, you know he there's had a he... lot of things he wasn't doing. <laughs> oh my so. god, that's the first thing he thinks about. Like, oh my god, I know he's a man. He, he's a man. I know he's he was. Man. I know he was living good. Oh, yeah. living he was, very good. He's but a living they, a good life. When they tell you you got to forget Earth, that's a lot. I mean, that's a look lot. at Earth. <laughs> this ghetto. As the we, world as they say. is a ghetto. <laughs> and they don't even call it by, you know, our name. They call it Terran. They say y'all niggas yeah. is a dirt boy. And they was racist. That's the other thing. Yes. They, they was racist. racist. And they, they was against his, they was against him being a mutant. Like, you not even full breed. What are you being racist against Earth? Racist right. ain't the word. The, the crew, I mean, the Shi'ar are straight portrayed in this series as pure colonizers. Right. Dead ass colonizers. Like, he Dead was fit to go be with them, dog. That was some real. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, you know, the nigga is white. <laughs> you know, like, that's the one thing, like, you know, no shots, but I've always said this. Y'all it's like colonize, white... we colonize. I mean, I understand. You know, it's like white people with dreads. You know, I always say y'all can cut them off and y'all be white. You know, but it's like, even... y'all ain't gonna have no problems, you know, while, you but know, he, me. But, but he's still a mutant, right? So right. Like, yeah, and but he's still and white. Not, he, not just a mutant, the MLK mutant. Like, he, the, yeah. he, he owned the, he okay. owned he on the Mount Rushmore mm-hmm. of mutant activists. Mm-hmm. This man had a whole statue. Was fitting to be. But they don't care about that. I, he was about to be Tamara Mowry for these month. <laughs> that's not oh, cool. No, but they don't no, care about that. See, that's what I'm saying. I, I'm glad we're bringing this up right now because one, that yeah. is like the weakest and cheapest analogy that people make. Because Professor X is as far from MLK. Well, yeah, I, mean, I agree. By the way, the well, white people's ML- wait, wait, look, the white no, people's version up. of MLK. The Hold white up. people's version of MLK, that's who, what he stands for. MLK was mo- well motivated by the Poonani, so him and Professor Hertz do well, have a lot yeah, of common. Yeah, that's facts, too. That's mm, facts. You know, I so... Mean, uh, I mean, I understand. <laughs> my ancestors are uh, not happy right now. Uh, <laughs> your uh, ancestors is like word truth, you know? Uh, like, uh, maybe, it's not, <laughs> maybe the analogy's a little closer than I thought. Yeah, uh, you know, I so might be wrong right. there. <laughs> you know, I might be wrong there. No, I've always argued that that's not a good analogy, and now okay. I'm like... Hmm. <laughs> but I want to make mention because Karen just said it and I wanted yeah. to bring that up. The fact that it's not, you could say, oh, because he's white, he got privilege. They put him lower than the low saying you are a half, you're not he's, even a full breed. You was yes. the mutant, my nigga. They basically call That's him like, a You're not even 100%. Why is you in here? And they said you're went, not even a monkey. They said you're lower than that. And shit. I'm like, wait a minute, right. isn't that backwards thinking? But okay, but. <laughs> right. I mean, uh, Space Poo Nanny will change a man. <laughs> then when Dirk, then when Death Blood, when Death Bird interrupts the marriage and, and is like the ceremony and is like, you gonna marry him with his freak blood or whatever? I'm like, 
<laughs> I know y'all ain't talking. None of y'all are even the same species up in here. Y'all look what, different. What did she call it? Ain't. The Milky Way ghetto? The Mil- <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, I agree with that. I agree with that. I hit the fucking roof when she said that. Because in my head, I heard her saying the word ghetto, but she ain't said it. And then she said, yeah. I fucking... <laughs> Went to fucking Neptune. That's I was good, like, are you good serious? Good acting, good writing right there. Because I mm-hmm. felt yes. that in my soul. Fantastic. But again, yeah. they are colonizers. That's, what, that's right, why they, they look are. all different. Like, I want to give a quick shout out to the chameleons. The chameleons are the horse-headed people that you mm-hmm. see tending mm-hmm. their gardens. Yes. Mm-hmm. As some slaves, right? Mm-hmm. The chameleons. Right. And Charles is okay with this because his <laughs> jello is, is cold. Okay. He is free in that again. Again. tomorrow. Like his jello saying. was jiggling. He I'm, against everything he say he about, man. I wish I ran up on him. I wish I ran up on him. I Xavier could have freed them. And Xavier is looking like, you know, a white man with dreads. But back to the chameleons. <laughs> they are, like, that's what I was making that point earlier. Like, you know, they have dreads and then they cut them off and yeah. then they go to their corporate job. They right. fine. You know, that's the same. But, Xavier I, but, I is a, but I can't be okay with that. Just because just cause he doing it don't make it all I'm right. I'm not he okay with it. it. I'm just yes. saying, and this is who Xavier is. It's like I got smoke they, for him. I mean, you should though. This nigga ain't shit. Like if Xavier he is, shit. he, he yes. been ain't shit. Trash. Like if Xavier been trash. I've always been team Magneto. He, ain't shit. he didn't yeah. even go back, and then all of a sudden he's talking about, oh, she's like, you want to see your children, right? I know you do. He's like, yeah, man, I just want to swing by, swing by, swing nigga. by. Nigga, Once you a year. Was dead. To, we we dead you think you're dead. dead. What you mean, swing by, like all casual and shit? What the fuck? Sweet cherry. <laughs> no respect. <laughs> this, man, this man did all that activism on earth just to man. go up there and kick it with them. <laughs> and they look. don't give a fuck about us. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say that they don't really care that's about the, us. That's, that's my point, mm-hmm. though. Like, I mean, I keep trying to shout out the chameleons, but that's the point. Yeah. If Xavier is a bald-headed white man, Nightcrawler is a blue-black demon. Like, right. which one of them is going to be down for the cause and Nightcrawler which one ain't? Nightcrawler would have got it. I'm not saying it's and, unpre- I'm not saying uh, it's not predictable. But wait, I'm and, saying and it's whack. To give Xavier a little <laughs> bit of grace, remember this man is the greatest telepath ever, dog. He has of read every person's thought on Earth. Mm-hmm. Nigga, if I read ten people's thoughts on Earth, I'd be like, all right, I'm good. Yeah. I'm this. Go for this. You got but it. But now he's reading them over there. Out. He re- I know, he reading but, you them know, over it, there now. They fuck whack. it. He probably he can't been, understand it. Half he reading colonizer thoughts every day, like it's cool. But you <laughs> know what? We <laughs> read people. Earth. That's He's why like, people talk all the time every day. <laughs> on Twitter, and it's too much. I don't give a fuck about other people's thoughts. Ooh, like, but word. people realize that. Imagine being we a telepath. We read that all the time. Imagine it, you, you just hearing it and not actually reading, reading it. All the thoughts, reading all the thoughts made Jean Grey crazy. It like, did. Yep. Like, so, he, so, and, so what exactly. kind of sociopath can read all them thoughts and be and like, be okay. yeah, I'm good? Even Superman don't read all the thoughts. Why is he a sociopath? Tune it out. That, Charles Xavier is a sociopath. No, that seems like he's a, a smart guy. move to me. Remove mm-hmm. yourself from the fray. No, he's not removing himself. I'm saying he hear the same thoughts, but he don't go crazy. He's just on he the like, yeah. Because I'm he's the king. <laughs> I'm, I'm the king, yes. I'm yes. with it. Oh, I'm when the we king. colonizing on this planet? Okay, yes. we're starting over over here. We're yes. not doing all that equality. <laughs> I'm white. <laughs> he he reverted like, to type, no shots. <laughs> okay. he, was white. he was white on Earth. He could have just been white on Earth, too. He didn't True. have to stand up for X Men. Nobody. He was one of the good looking ones that didn't have to stay in the sewer. Man, space poon any folks. He it fucking abandoned sunshine. them just like Scott abandoned his child right. at the last minute. I will mm. stand by that fucking mm-hmm. point mm-hmm. that I made. Scott but, didn't abandon his child. He just walked out of the room because he's, you know. I can't fall. do this. I got to be here for my child. I can't do this. Uchi Wally on one mic. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was let, just continuing both, on with this both story. Disgusting. Continue on with the story. Yeah. I was fucking dying. First of all, the writers are incredible because yes, agreed. The way that when Lalandra was doing that long with this speech about oh, it's a new day. Mm. Can you feel it? I'm getting married. He had my heart. You know, the stand and third. And that old Shiar man was just like rolling his eyes. I was sitting there doing the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Like this bitch it cannot be fucking serious right now. We're in a <laughs> war, right? We're in the middle of a fucking war. Like, we don't care nothing shit. about your happiness, girl. We're trying to fight somebody. Like mm-hmm. self awareness, and it's just and it's just so funny to me that the writers had characters in there sitting there like, why the fuck would you say that right now? Like <laughs> I just I just enjoy that a lot. Right, right. She coming in with love ballads, and they're like, look, if you but we did sing the same song, honey. Nah, we ran in a all. fight, and you come in here with your love ballads. Get out of here. Uh, <laughs> I, I just loved uh, when she's talking to. Charles and she's like, once we crush the Cree, you can go teach them about peace. 
Right. <laughs> and you <laughs> just sitting there. <laughs> you so wild. He <laughs> really sitting there. Jumped out. <laughs> he really sitting there. How Magneto evil? Because he would have went up there and turned the whole damn thing Ooh. around. Turned yeah. that shit around. He was like, oh, it would have been a problem. Voice. Turn right. that shit upside down. He'd be like, what y'all do for a living? Colonize. That's not a that's not a job. Mm, that's not a profession. I don't like that. Mm-mm. Uh, um, I'm sorry. Um, that's a shit I don't like. <laughs> mm. He'd have freed everybody. They'd have had all types of problems. It looked like y'all doing what happened to my people. That's what it looked yeah, like y'all doing. Yes. Uh, that nigga would have flashbacks as soon shit. as he woke up, boy. That nigga would have like, mm-hmm. fuck. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> they can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> Child, it hit them with that. Never forget. And then it would have been all over. <laughs> I cannot, like, fucking think with y'all on the <laughs> show, bro. Like, it's, uh, y'all too funny. Um, Ronan accuses us of a bitch. He continues to be a bitch. Yeah. Um, wow. He was a bitch. Why have they that never, why that have they never really colonized. made him a threat? Like yeah, they, I don't know. <laughs> He looks so he looks so cool and like his costume. Mm-hmm. People like he could do something. He ain't got no hands. He never got hands. Everything yeah. they put him in movies, TV. He just always like a guy that get. He like one step above a henchman. He middle management Thank for you. bad guys. <laughs> I mean, I can't lie. Growing up, Ronan in the comics to me, I like I knew about him from the Marvel universe where they would list every character. He never showed up. You yeah, know what I mean? <laughs> like, like you know, outside no, like, of being in the, it's crazy. Yeah. No, nobody's ever written like a dope arc for him because it's like he got a dope look to him. With he the, does, but he just get shows up. He's a jobber. Gets gets beat up <laughs> in the first quarter of a movie, and then what about Raven? Why don't you call him a jobber yeah. that's just letting yeah. putting putting the rock over? <laughs> yeah, he, he shows up. going, y'all ain't paying overtime. Well, I guess I'm out of here. He gets he get beat up. He get. <laughs> He gets beat up so that someone can learn a lesson. That's what he does. Oh, no. He, he get beat up early so somebody be like, I got to believe in myself. <laughs> so I get my ass whooped so you don't have to. So what was Charles' story actually about? It was just like you living in bliss, getting intergalactic pussy, and then you find out your niggas is dead. Mm-hmm. Like, what actually was we supposed to learn from oh, Charles' story? I, okay, so I think he learned uh, that he had been shutting off the biggest... P- joke big joke in the room which is his brain right because some like, and i was thinking this the whole damn time too i was like why don't you just make him do the shit charles like mm. i was like did he lose his powers did the healing thing do it not work on the creed like i'm or do it not work on the shiar like i'm waiting for an explanation and of course he does it at the end i'm like i end. guess his lesson is like i want peace and then oh wait a minute my people die all right fuck y'all peace I got to go back to Earth and do my piece again. That was it. Yeah, I, like I said, when he did that, I, I always think about the time. And he did it when his legs did not work. <laughs> when he was like, when his legs didn't work, he was like, oh, I got mind. a brain. Let me use it. I'm the most powerful nigga in the room. Let me show them. They think they powerful. They ain't got shit on me. Let's go to the classroom. I think also, like, the fact that this was juxtaposed with Storm story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the lesson was also supposed to coincide with Storm, which was that Storm was the only one blocking her powers. Mm. Yep. She was the only one that um, she, she, and she said it because she was tired, because she was ready to move on. And I think Charles, who got shot, <laughs> mm. like, you know, let's not, let's not forget, he it got mm. nursed back to health by Shi'ar technology. Charles is like, can I retire? Can I can I let this go? Can I just can live Can have a life too? Can All I right. live Facts. right? Right. I think that's I think that's where they just oppose. And of course, both made the decision. No, I can't turn my back on who I am and who I was, mm-hmm. and I have to go back and fight for my people. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there, I got another question for y'all because uh, Forge gets cut off, and I think this is the most important. And this is what we were talking about the theme of yeah. the episode or whatever. Is Forge says the white man's greatest. Weapon wasn't guns, bombs, any of that stuff. It was the little white lie, the little white lie that we could be, and he gets cut off. And mm-hmm. to me, he's saying the little white lie that we could be white. Mm-hmm. You know, that That's we what could I be thought assimilated. too. I thought you thought we yes. could be equal or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. equal, white, whatever you want to you know, call it. Was it. White, yep. Because mm-hmm. I think whiteness is a concept. It is yes. a concept. We, it's we've seen it more. Yeah, we've seen it more. 
Yes, yeah, it, it, and it, do, it does what it needs to do to survive. Mm-hmm. Yes, it so does. So if the numbers get low enough, Italians is white now. Right. And then you Asians. Know? And well, then right. Jews. Right. Well, yeah. so Light that brings Latins. a point. Just like when how they treated Charles talking about, oh, he ain't even human. He half free. Like right. white people have done that to themselves. Like back, yes, back, back, back mm-hmm. in the day. Irish people, when they came over, they were seen as lower than white. Right. They were yes. seen as basically niggas. So Polish yes. people, boy, the jokes I grew up. And all yes. that stuff. And then, and then, yeah, if you even come from back in the day to even current times, people who are of a lower social economic class, they're yes. white or not, they're considered lower, quote unquote, yes. right? So mm-hmm. that's just something that's been Until you get over. ingratiated into whiteness and, to, right. you know, bring it all together, right. the whiteness is the equality, quote unquote, that they're promising is. Right. But once you're white, we're all white. We're equal. Mm. Just your group. You and now we still gonna have some some niggas, and we're not gonna like them. But mm-hmm. you are now in the whites, and I, yeah. I, I I feel like that you know Forge could have meant either one of those things, and that that's what I would have took from it. Mm-hmm. And that's right, what right. And to what you said to link it all together. That's what Storm and uh, Charles were both doing in this episode was they were refusing who they were. Right. That's why Charles doesn't use his powers throughout the episode. That's why Storm, you know, thinks it's the gun that nullified her powers. But it's really her saying, really her. yo, wouldn't it be better if I was white? You know what I mean? And we've Ooh. all, no, we've all had Ooh, that yeah. thought. Well, yes. you know, like keeping it a buck, you know, mm. I know I have at points in my life. I was like, damn, yo, this shit is ass. <laughs> but then you got to realize this shit is that blessing. This shit is that greatness. You know, this is yeah. where the strength in your power comes from. This is where your ancestors have breathed and lived to you to make you yeah. in this moment. So it's like all of those things. And but that and these was, are two soldiers on the front lines. Front there lines. it is. So it ain't even two just the, the average, biggest. like, you know, the mm-hmm. average, like, day-to-day bullshit. It's yeah. like, no, I literally got, I got uh, uh, symbolically killed when my powers got nullified yep. the storm. So that's like a death that she died and then. You know, she tells Jean, like, Shit, maybe it's better to just let it go. That's all Charles' whole story was. He was just yep. up there like, "What? If, but what if we don't go back? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do like, we got to? He would like, he was, a, he, he got so close to literally forgetting the whole struggle just so he could finish his life out up there. So, yeah, I, I think and that then- was the thing. He was going to remember person, Magneto. There it is, and that's the he, one he, thing. That's yeah. one, one of the one things he and was that's like, the one can I at least remember? I know, that, and that's that's not even the way, can I at least remember? That's the way he's like, no, I need to remember the nigga who's about that life. Yes. You know what I mean? That's yeah. like Drake trying to forget Kendrick Lamar. You know what I mean? It's like, I need to remember the one, you know what I mean? The one that put I, that fire on me. Because like, I'm a little yes. pop, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I know I'm a little pop, but that's a nigga over there, you no, know what I mean? Word, word. And then so, then yeah. you had a note here about Rudyard Kipling, that Rudyard Kipling quote. Oh, my God. No, one, when you were talking about Charles being, you know, a sarcastic bastard, mm-hmm. he says, at one point when he's talking to Gladiator, he says, you remind me of a man I once knew, or, you know, a man I've read about, you know, right, basically he's talking that's about Rudyard Kipling. Song. Okay, sorry. <laughs> and Roger Kipling, one of his famous things is this poem he wrote, The White Man's Burden, where he first put forth that phrase. And that's what Charles says. This man had many illusions of burdens, none of them real. Many burdens, none of them real. Mm. And that's The White Man's Burden is this poem that basically puts forth the idea that it's white people's burden to go out and be colonizers. Mm. You know, oh my God, the you know the burden of this. We have to go out and educate these savages. You don't. It's basically to. what Rudyard puts forth, and that's what he says. Many illusions, none of them real, and that's like the same thing can be said to so many people today. And people, you know, I don't even want to say you know left or right. Just people mm-hmm. who have very extreme views in anything. It's like there's mm-hmm. a lot of illusions people create, and yes. none of them are real. Mm-hmm. You know, people. But I will say that you know, at the same token. The right is made up of usually more conservative, more people who are looking to regress to a time where, mm. you know, basically racism was in full effect. Right. So that mm-hmm. never works out for me. So I'd much mm-hmm. rather an extreme <laughs> leftist mm-hmm. than an extreme right in any case. That, and that, also, like, it's, you know. it's wild because, like, he's saying that, but also he's chilling with the colonizers. Yeah. But that's what it is. He, he part of the he's problem. trying to forget at this yeah. point. And, yeah. this is, and, mm. all right, and everything we call him out for in this episode, we have to call Storm out for in this episode. Because mm. that's what I've been saying, you know, like Storm is over there chilling with Forge yeah. and, 
you know, yeah. that's problematic. And a lot of I people do think it's I do I'm not I'm not against that. Yeah. I think it is very mm-hmm. much I think that's why the stories are together. Yep. Mm-hmm. Is mm-hmm. her version of this is she knew what Forge work had done to mutants. Mm-hmm. She hated that. Mm-hmm. But she also hated the idea of going back to the fight. So yep. subconsciously she's subduing her own powers and trying to, you know, just let everything go. So like, yep. yeah, I, both of them were kind of, I mean, obviously Charles is on a, a higher scale because of the, who he fucking with, but the theme is the same. You know what and, I'm saying? Like, And because he's white. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, you know I, ha- like, I have more understanding for Storm, individual mm, choice, yeah. especially with it being subconscious. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, obviously Charles is going through some of the same things because the subconscious part for him is when he realized he hadn't even used his power since he got there. I said, yeah, you, you were shut down, bro. Mm-hmm. You yeah. you was you was ready to, to call it a rap and let the let the mutants fight for themselves. <laughs> I have had <laughs> enough. But I that's the thing, it's, you know, it's tough. Like you said, Rod, he is on the front line, so mm-hmm. it'll wear you, you know? out. He literally got shot. Like we, I'm not like I do understand. Like I don't yeah. want y'all to feel All like right. I don't understand the temptation. I just feel like if you him. You gotta make a different choice, like, and I—I I mean, like, and not just him, like him, Charles Xavier. I mean, capital H I M. If you you mm-hmm. one of them ones, you one of you them know? ones, like, yeah. like, and I know, I guess, like, to your point, it's like, and it's just interesting to me that the mutants don't refer to themselves as humans; they refer to regular non-power people as like a separate thing. Mm. But at the end of the day, technically, y'all are also human. Y'all just mm. are offshoot of humans, and mm. you have human emotion. You have human doubts obviously human self-loathing and all this other stuff so mm-hmm. i i get how that are and obviously these are shown these are illustrated physically illustrated you know in terms of you know people blocking their own blessings people blocking mm-hmm. their powers all this other stuff but it's just like i get it but you as you said you one of them ones do you not right. yeah you do you want to like if i that? found out like uh no offense to this character but if i found out like beast went up there <laughs> and was like yeah, I'm gonna stay here. I'm I'm good. I, I, mm-hmm. could, I could see I, that. I, I, I'm like, yeah. I mean, it's like, messed right. up, Hank, but you know, like eh. Charles on the he he in the um when they do Mutant History Month, he he <laughs> one of them one. Yes. So they, it's a little they more him disappointing. Every damn time you yes. get tired of yeah. hearing about the like they, 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 they misquote with him every day, like they do in the Yes, when when they, when they sh- when they show about the mutant eyes on the prize, he gonna be right there front and center. Yes. When it's, a Repu- part. it's Republicans on their version of Twitter being like, today, Charles would have said, it's okay what happened to Genosha. Yes! <laughs> he, he actually would have agreed. Exactly. So, <laughs> no. I don't, but, but it's about, and I, I said one of the many lessons here yeah. is just about recognizing who you are and that you, you are that nigga. You are HBIC right. or whatever you want to say. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I get it. I understood. But, you know. And, and it's also that all great people go through tests. And yes. like, and then the other thing, like you were saying, Tatiana, or like you were like, you know, mutants separate themselves, and that's I think it goes back to you know real world things. Like yeah. we've talked about this before on the show. We had, I mean, I had to explain myself, Rod, for like three damn episodes when I once said that you know black is a creation, you mm-hmm. know, and that you know all of this is illusions, mm-hmm. and people were just like, "What are you talking about?" And I'm like, you know, we are all human at one point. You know, like Tatiana said, we all have human emotions. We don't have black emotions. You know, Mm-mm. people have emotions. You know, right. we all have human emotions. And white people and colonizers came along at one point and said, you were this, you were that. Right. And because of that, that separates into caste systems like they were talking about on this show, episode. Mm-hmm. And that's where we have our current reality. But right. we are all human living a human existence on this planet together. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah, we all Terrans. Yeah, we all turn. We all in the dirt ball together. Yeah, there it is. we all on this this world irony, together. Together. It was also funny with the irony of them being like they're Terrans, and as I understand Terrans, I always just think, oh, people that walk or whatever. Mm-mm. And it, I'm like, oh, oh no, y'all don't, y'all mean it the wrong, the racist way. <laughs> they mean it yeah. like they mean it like we trailer park trash, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. like we trailer park of the galaxy. It they, took a couple Earth bitches. I was like, oh, that don't mm-hmm. feel like y'all being like. Y'all trying to be accurate in the dictionary? No, I, no, they, no. I taste some, slur. some spaces racism here. Mm-hmm. Some I spaces. mean, at the same time, yes. it's like they would look at us as we are ants. The yeah. same yeah, way yeah, we yes. look at ants, you know, and like fuck these ants. But I guess, I guess what I'm saying, Ben, is like it's how like 
white people during slavery would be like, no, black people are animals. They're not mm-hmm. humans. Yep. And that's how we look at them. And <clears throat> I understand that's what they wrote down, but I know it's not true, right? Yeah. Like they, because mm. then they actually did stuff that you do to people, not animals with people, mm. black people. Yep. So obviously they, 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 their babies are half the black people. So, mm-hmm. eh, we know mm. that you're that you that's that's just what you wrote down to justify what you did, right? Yep. And the way they were saying Terrence, it just and I I know it had to be on purpose. It's just oh it, yeah, it, it's great great writing because it gave me that feeling right away. Where I'm like mm, it like it hit right away. That like sounded mm. like nigger with the hard er, right? No. Yes, uh, without uh, you saying uh, it. A lot of uh, a <laughs> lot of lot of attitude on that Terrence. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I like, there's some bass well, in your voice. One last time, I want to shout the chameleons out because the chameleons, yeah. if you read the Marvel comics, are a major spacefaring race. They have their own whole thing. They are a big time thing. And in this episode, these niggas were gardeners. So it's like they really had these niggas looking trifling like yes. some colonizers would. So yep. like the uh, chameleons give power pack their powers. You know, these they, niggas I mean, are, they're trying yeah. to conquer the creed. Yeah, like they doing like, the big things, and in this shit, they niggas are like, yeah. Right now in the comments, the chameleons are out there buck wilding, in fact. Right. And right now, you know, they gardeners over here. So, yeah. do you like how Professor X turned into the professor from Money Heist at the end? <laughs> wait, <what? laughs> yes, good call, good call. Uh, I was watching that, and I was like, wait a minute, this looks familiar. I uh, gotta teach y'all a lesson even, right I, now. I, I was I eating the apple even. and shit. I'm like this nigga is. <laughs> Is ain't shit like I, I don't know. I can't I, even front though. Know. When he when he did that, I, Karen was here. I was like, show them who you are, to. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like I felt like he was <laughs> finally was standing hilarious. up. I said, yeah. I, I said you've been letting them. They've been dragging you for thirty minutes. You felt like Ramonda talking Queen to you Ramonda? all types of show ways. Show them yes. who you are. Show them who you are. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> I could not believe this man. Let them do him. They were just talking filthy. I'm like, oh, bro, crazy. make them respect you. You can read anyone's mind in this room right now and be like, shut the fuck up in their head. You don't even got to say it with your mouth. You can just shut the fuck up and they'll have to stop because they ain't never felt that before. They'd be like, whoa, 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 hold on, what just happened? And he didn't. I was, oh. But when he did that and put them literally in little desk, yeah, like I said, yeah, man, flex on them. <laughs> um. Can I and, say one more thing about how <laughs> Professor Ed saying shit? Sure. Yeah. You know uh, we always for that. Always. You can talk about that. All right, all right. Vulcan is in this episode. Yes. Vulcan is the <laughs> man who's standing there with the Shi'ar guard. He's His mouth is on fire. His eyes are on fire. He's wearing a blue and red costume. Yeah. Gladiator's there, too. <laughs> yeah. Doing, doing right. nothing, but yeah. Yeah, but for those who don't know, Vulcan is Strat Summer's brother. Mm, Okay. Right. And uh, Havit's brother by that. Alex mm-hmm. Summer's brother. That would have been very important to let people like, not to mm-hmm. like me, no. Yeah. He's been sitting up there, he been sitting up there for however long. This man who was who was enslaved, by the way, that's how he originally was it, up there. He just sitting there knowing this man, brother, a lot, everything. They think they brothers dead. Like, it's crazy. This man is a fucking <laughs> sociopath, man. Professor X recruited Vulcan to his first version of the X-Men who all get killed by Krakoa. Vulcan got captured on Krakoa, escapes into space, and, you know, like you said, was yeah. enslaved by the Kree and the Shi'ar, et cetera. So, I I'm not sure... I think got twice like that. I don't... Yeah, you know, he got got a lot in his life. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure exactly what <laughs> Vul- what story they're going with, right, with Vulcan right. on this, but the fact that he's there, I don't think they could change it that much where he isn't Scott's right. brother. So, so, so say nothing? Right. So, because you getting some, you just going to let that slide. Nigga, this, yo, that Shi'ar Punani is on another level for me because <laughs> this man is out here abandoning the cause. Fuck your brother. Fuck your couch. Right? You know what I mean? you like, right. she got that whip up here. I'm leaving Look. everybody. <laughs> You know, <laughs> nigga said, I can't. You can buy a new couch, Charlie Murphy. Right. But what about my legs? <laughs> Put your mama Dead. on the phone. I ain't come, tell her I ain't coming home. Crazy. Oh. I just thought about something that was real fucked up. I'm not going to say it. But, um, Go ahead. Say it. Say it. We here for it. No, no, no. Don't, don't, don't. You talking about legs. I was thinking of kids. I was thinking of kids. You know, the movie no. kids. So. Oh, I have oh. no legs. Yeah, I'll say it. Don't. Um, <laughs> and and I mean, this is this happened with both of them because I also want to make sure we set this point and then move on to Storm. But um, 
the fact how they both when they both found out about what happened to Genosha, I thought that was heartbreaking. Ooh, like, yeah. like I don't know where. I mean, I know Storm allegedly is in Texas, wherever the fuck Grand Canyon she at. But mm-hmm. like, this nigga is millions of miles away in space, and like to see that, like, and yes, jokes about seeing seeing yeah. Gambit, nobody else. But <laughs> that was wild. But to like. You you that you, nigga missed that you, cooking boy. You live in a you live in oblivious, <laughs> right? No <more> seasoning. <laughs> you live in oblivious. You is my last hope. You live Storm in oblivious, and this, shit's, and this shit's happening. Like you found out your whole fucking family, and you know, like this right. big. I don't know. Like I just <laughs> I, hey, but the part that got me was <laughs> he when, saw he, Gambit. Oh, when he was saw. saying when he was talking about. Yeah, they were dancing. They were partying. They were making love. I said, "Oh, yo, <laughs> what was you seeing, baby? What was you seeing? My guy." Now, ben, ah. now ben had a point about it. This was actually taken from directly from, from Grant story. Morrison and Frank. But still, Martin. it was mad, like random to me. I was like, "Wait a minute!" It was, well, I'm just like, well, what it made me think about is with his psychic powers, he know people be fucking around yes. him all the time. Yes. He's a voyeur, and he's a peeping fucking right. Tom. How like, can he, you not be, fam? Wouldn't you? I mean, no, I, mean, no, I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't man, say it out loud. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Hey, but look, but look, though. It's crazy, it, was a though. Mo- it was a moment of weakness. <laughs> it, it, that's how shocked he was. He he forgot. He said the quiet part out loud. <laughs> he said that earlier in episode two. He was like, thank you for saying the quiet part out loud. Yeah. yeah. It'd be funny if he would have said a bunch of, like, they was smoking <laughs> weed. They was, <laughs> they was on that Hennessy. They was playing space. Can you believe it? I can't believe they did this shit to my folks, man. They was rolling dominoes. They man. were drinking that crown. <laughs> <laughs> oh the dog liquor. How dare y'all? I just. I just... Uh, Only y'all could make a serious moment. Just so <laughs> black and ridiculous. That nigga's like, it was Love is Blonde's last episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know who she chose. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just it was just funny when he went down that list. But yeah, um it, it, I love the illustration of it. I love how Remy's face turned into the like the sentinel the skull. with the green. Mm-hmm. The skull, yeah. Shit. Oh, that oh. was like they be they be doing something. And that's why you can do it with animation. It just yes. the same thing just can't work in live action. Why it's so no. important to keep animation alive yes. um, for everybody. Cause this is a story that it, it, cause that was a thing too. The pacing of the story can only be taught in animation. There yes. it is. That, mm-hmm. That's, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. The tonal mm-hmm. shifts. Tonal shifts yeah. are way too Because we would have straight up rejected. You rejected like, it immediately. When, when, when Storm tells Forge, I love you, and it's been like five minutes on screen together, we were like, get the fuck out. That's yeah. what the fuck I had. <laughs> that's what yeah. the fuck I had said. Right. Nice you just segue. got that, girl. You nice just got that. <laughs> to Storm's, I call it wait, Storm's wait, before, Awakening. Before we go to Storm's Awakening, yeah. I do want to say that last thing also about that thing. That was like, it was like Terminator 2, the way that he had that Sarah Connor vision. If anyone's mm-hmm. seen Terminator yes, 2. it was when, very Sarah Connor. Yes, yeah, when she has the vision of the nuclear blast and then she gets turned to a skeleton. That was that same. And that, that's that, like you said, I mean, you can do that in live action, obviously. Didn't right. It? But that's but some horrifying harder. shit. Right. No, you don't have the same level of freedom and flexibility than Mm-mm. than you do. Like you can you can throw many ideas and illustrations, and literally the term illustration. Like, right. come on. So, um, but yes, that was a great segue to as I mentioned the storms part, the life death part, which they both went through it in a way, but mm-hmm. storm particularly. And yes, I said the same thing, Rod. I said she loves Storm. She loves Forge now. That's fast. That was fast. real fast. You just I was like, him. was there a time jump? Did I miss what's happening right. here? You just but hated had- that man. Before we went to commercial break, you was like, you sell out, <laughs> coon, <laughs> loser cool. ass, Candace always mutant. I and heard then, it. Yeah, and then the sec- <laughs> they come back from commercial. He's like, oh, I got sick from that bite. She's like, baby, don't die. I love you. I think I think we need to say that this episode really says the power of sex. Like there must be, you know, he must have been laying it. When was they it, fucking? Oh, you before know, before he got that, bit. What if that leg vibrate? When? That hand, <laughs> might. that <laughs> hand. Look, Make that hand shake. probably got all kind of attachment. He's a. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he can invent shit. He's an inventor. No. He probably do know some shit. You know. 
So black, she, she ain't never seen before. Be they that's cut that, that scene you know, out. Well, that's you know, what that. Charles said when he said they were making love. <laughs> you he was, know, he talking about that. He was getting, he was getting the psychic vibrations was from Ford so hard. He said, "Damn, that shit was almost big as Gambit." <laughs> you think he sell uh, Magneto and Jubilee? You thought you not Jubilee sh- Rose? Rose, I'm sorry. You think that's what? Oh uh, Jesus, uh, yeah. Cause no. don't do that oh, one. Yeah, wrong, wrong person. <laughs> yeah, they already called that man a groomer. You know, yeah. that, that that's real low. That's all. Um, yeah, <laughs> you can't do that. No, and Matt, no, Rogue had already rejected Magneto by that point. Right. You know, yeah. yeah. No, he so saw some randos. He, he, it was it was probably Forge and Storm. There we That's go. what I'm thinking. He yeah. said, God damn, somebody's making love too, y'all. Y'all feel that? <laughs> this is just me? I thought y'all said one of y'all I was thought, psychic. I thought AI those... robots, I didn't know they existed. <laughs> Apparently they do. I thought all those so all those thoughts was about Genosha. Like, they that were, night when they was at the I party in the gala. There was other shit going on around. Some I did people too. wasn't at the gala because they was fucking. But when shit he said like my making love, I said, well, now that we talking about the other side, it could have also been <laughs> some of this in there too. <laughs> we don't know the exact It, it could have been a we mixture. Do, we do know they were making love before Genosha thing happened because she saw it on the news. So yep. it could. Hey, it's cutting it close. I'm just saying. It is <laughs> real close apparently. That man was talking about going to <laughs> island vacations, and Storm was like, "Yes, that sounds like a great idea." Right? After she just got we her power back, remember that? Okay, she just got her power back. Right. Hair, everything, and she gonna be like, "Yeah, fuck it, we'll go to the beach now." And the adversary had told her, "Like you doing this because you don't want to be in the fight no yep. more." She and got she her powers went, back and was like, "You right? I don't. <laughs> I don't. Dick. You know what I mean?" Dick is your dearest friend. Appreciate you for that therapy, player. I'm going straight to the Bahamas. <laughs> I'm tired of controlling the weather. I'm going somewhere where it's nice all the time. All no the mosquitoes. All the time. <laughs> oh, gosh. Y'all, I, I'm trying to... I mean, look... I'm trying to that, cover the lessons in the... I have in questions, the you know. Th- there are big questions in that, in, the, in that last two minutes of this. My man was like, you hurricanes. know... How, First of all, my man heals up instantly and is like, how about an island vacation? They put vacation? the cat on him. They put the yeah. cat juice. Yeah. And that nigga's that like works. instantly like, Let, fuck this shit. Let's get out some, of here, baby. She put some Vicks baby rub on his chest. Vicks. <laughs> this man was Vicks this man was everything. Up. Yeah, said, that ain't me. <gasps> that nigga drank some ginger ale. He was like, let's yeah. go. With some saltine crackers, it was good to go. <laughs> good to go. She's like, we I got out. you some ginger ale. We out. <laughs> and, but no, but I understand they're speeding up the timeline because yeah. they have limited oh, yeah, yeah. time. But it's just it's just hilarious it's to your right? point. It's like literally 30 seconds ago, you were saying if it reached your heart, it's a wrap. Mm. And now you good. Like, no, nah, fam. Ain't no way. Like They but, don't have time. They don't yeah, have time. I, I get yeah, that. We only allowing it because it's animation. It's 30 minutes. I, I'm, yeah. I'm not mad at it. It's just... no. As a as an adult watching it, I, I, and maybe it was like this the whole time, you it know. Was, like, it was, and I'm not it realizing was that. So like, it was maybe it's worse. also keeping you know keeping true to the origin to be like, yo, mm-hmm. they wasn't really slow building a lot. No, it's like, oh, yo, Morph, I love you. Oh, he dead. Okay, all right, <laughs> nigga. That nigga Morph <laughs> is gone in the second episode of the original series. Yep, like everyone he forgets. Is, I never it, remembered him being there in the first place. To be honest with you, yep. like, it happened so quick. I you never should've. remember that nigga. That's why when I first when X Men ninety seven first came out and I seen the intro, I said, "Who the fuck is this nigga?" That's <laughs> dead ass what I said. And I I'm like, who? The, and Ben was like, he was there the whole time. No, but, so too. I said, since fucking when? But nigga, the only reason I remember that is because I rewatched the shit. I remember when right. they came out with the uh, Morph toy, the Marvel Legends. Yep, I and I was that. like, who the fuck is this nigga? You know, they're like, it's like, it's like from the X-Men series. And I, yep. I had to go with the Wikipedia like, oh I shit. Remember, I remember. <laughs> sound like me. I remember more uh, from, from that episode, but also the meme of Wolverine looking at the picture and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I feel like that, like, I remember Logan's sadness about being a, a, a like rejected by Gene and mm-hmm. Morph dying so much. I don't know why it stuck you with me so that. much. Mm. I remember it like, yo, his homie died and then he couldn't get with the girl he loved. And and Logan Loke, he was the saddest character on X-Men for me because he, he was yep. always moping because of he that. He is sad. Damn he sure is. is. He's always yeah. sad. Yeah, and no one it. else cared that Morph died, which was like super they weird. They damn like, sure did he it. He was like crying and everybody was like, by episode two, everybody was like, anyway, y'all want to fight some Sentinels? What's for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> no, and then 
there was a morph in the comics during the age of apocalypse but he looked different so when this like once again when they were like from the x-men series and it's this weird looking white dude he looks more like the guy who morph morphs into you know yep. when he turns yep. into like the hairless version of himself mm -hmm. but his like normal white dude self is the one they had the toy of and i was like who the fuck is this morph you know <laughs> but that shit I, didn't sell well i know it's, mm -hmm. it's you can still get them right now i did, did want i did want to mention the adversary just how much of a motherfucker that character is and Again, the lessons. There's so many lessons, but that lesson in embracing your own inner adversary that we all got, mm -hmm. that's the only mm -hmm. way to defeat it. I thought that shit was fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also love the choice of having the voice actress do both parts. Mm -hmm. Like, so that the mm -hmm. adversary is talking to her in her, mm -hmm. it, like it's it the same, same actress as, that plays Storm mm -hmm. doing both, but one mm -hmm. is obviously, mm -hmm. yeah, one has obviously got some stuff done to it to mm -hmm. make it sound a little different, but that was like it made me wonder if like the adversary for Forge sounds like a, a twisted version of his voice, and mm -hmm. it, you yeah. know it just yeah. made me feel that way because it was so it was so good. I know episodes from my perspective though. Yeah, yeah, and then he came out the woodwork random with the Harry Potter magic. I said, "Oh, okay, we got Yo, that." Where was and he this was before, down but... bad before that? Like well, he was random. Like, I thought he was dying. He came in there you, with that book. Like you know what it goes expect his Patronus. It's right. <laughs> like, and it, it works. It goes back to the power of, of sex. The punani. He was like, yeah. you will not kill my woman. There it is. <laughs> I will find the strength. And as soon as I do this, I'm going to go down. Yep, but I'm going to protect this punani. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no, no, facts. And then, and then, Rod, like you mentioned earlier, like how, and we've been saying this, just how this animation is fucking beautiful and just how... Mm. They're able to just, like, they expanded so much upon how it used to be. And it's like, it's still classic, but better. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, you don't think they could, like, get better, but that shit is insane. And just that whole sequence when Storm woke the fuck up mm -hmm. and, like, the power through the atmosphere and, like, like that shit was bugged out. And But I loved it because it was just, once again... When we say Omega level, we mean this is the end times type niggas, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, that shit was crazy. And then for her to do all that and the 30 inch bust down come out platinum mm -hmm. 613, I said, oh my God. The black costume that's came out. One. It was gorgeous. That's the costume in the hair that I fucked with. Yes. That's the one. Mm -hmm. I love that they held that back until this moment. And once again, because it's animation, we let we do, we don't have to watch her get dressed up. She need to say, "I gotta go get my costume." It literally just grew on her. She flew and was like, "Yeah, maybe she got them powers too." I don't know. Plausible. Yeah. <laughs> no, because I was, the, I was I like, "New outfit, the, let's go." I was like the one sitting there, like, "Well, that's really not storm." But then, like you said, Rock, because it's animation, I'm like, "Fuck it," and it's a moment. You mm -hmm. know, it's celebratory. She's flying with the bison. I'm down with that every time. So the, the horse. She's flying. She's flying with the chameleons. Oh god. <laughs> But I, I I am a huge fan of Mohawk Storm and all that that, that represents. She cool, uh, but no, no, the not thirty inch cool. bust down is my storm. No, mm. she's not cool. She's amazing. So you know, but I hope they do you know return to that at some point. But I did love that moment, and I do love that outfit. I love all of the different I storm love outfits. outfits yeah. Like mm -hmm. you know the the nineties X Men one she normally wears in the intro. The black leather is fire. I hope they make a Marvel Legends of her in the overalls that she's been rocking the last few episodes. Because uh, Storm in any outfit. And I love Storm. The way that she responded to the TV was like, your black mama, when she find out something bad that happened to your mm -hmm. cousin. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe this. I was like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, I could see her instantly just leaving that nigga there and just flying straight there. Because mm -hmm. she can do that now. Mm. And, and like, can. because... Forge was such a tool for the for the eradication and subdu uh, uh, people subduing mutants. Mm -hmm. I wonder what his feelings are going to be about her. Like what happened to Genosha could literally be something that leads back to him. Because oh yes, he, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So like, I wonder how he deals with that guilt because and she, and her too because she was just literally ready to be like you coon to to like I love you. Mm. And now, boom, Genosha, like, how does that affect their relationship? Does he go back to help, use powers to help? Like, what's that going on? Toxic. Not, not toxic. well. Not, not well is how that's going. <laughs> I have to say that. that it's a little uh, toxic. 
adversary gonna have a lot more self hate and guilt to feed on in a second. Mm, boy, okay, mm-hmm. there was uh, layers and levels of that. And then this whole thing culminates in the reveal at the end. And Ben, I mean, wait, we wait, were... wait, 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 we got to go back. We got to, we can't, we can't jump to that yet because I, I got to talk about the adversary and the Monaco okay. family because we did not get to. Oh, you, this Monaco family that. thing. Okay, that that is one of the most brilliant lines of the episode. Is when the adversary tells Storm that she went and hid herself in this monotone family, and then transforms the mo- adversary's face into all the different whiteness of the X Men, mm-hmm. besides Hank McCoy, who is the one blue face, but you know he's still white. But what other black X Men you know besides Bishop? Ooh. He ain't there, mm. and that's the point. And when Storm joins the crew, it's nut. Bishop ain't there at all. She went to a team that was all white people. Mm. You know facts. And that's like with the adversary calling her out on that was that I mean it was like it's this I really applaud this show because it really if you're a longtime comic fan, there's so many not just shout outs and stuff to you like but it also is just smart. You know, it's taking and dissecting and taking apart things like that at X Men. Cause I don't know if that's ever been brought up like in the X Men comic. Because mm-hmm. one, there's not a lot of black writers of X Men comics, mm-hmm. so that's one of the issues. So it's like because of that we don't get these type of tapes where a black person gets to examine what the X Men really are and what Storm's role in the X Men really is, and that's something that the Life Death comic is all about. The Life Death comic is about Storm examining her own role. Is she this African goddess? Is she the Mohawk, you know, wearing street thief? Is she one of the X-Men hanging out with all these right. white people? You know, who is she amongst all these? And that's what life death is about. You know, it's mm. about you go through life, you die, you know, you go through it, you know, as you're living. Like, you mm. know, you have to be reborn again and again. So mm. I think this was, you know, it like, like I said, it took me two watches to get it. But on my second watch, I was like, this is as brilliant as any other episode they've done. Mm. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, and Storm also says, I cannot breathe, which was. Uh, mm. Bo has talked about how that was a direct shout out to George Floyd mm. and that's you know like it's doing shit like that with the X-Men is yeah. just shit you don't get to see unless you have you know people of color and you know truly oppressed people you know people marginalized people writing these stories you know Here, here's another question Yep. what's Charles gonna do when he get back God, that's a great shit. Reason. Reason. he ain't gonna the do reason- shit no, right. he gonna the do a lot. The reason I ask, he ain't gonna is, do what Magneto gonna do. Don't sleep. Right. The reason I ask is because um, it can be an event that changes you, right? Because that mm-hmm. amount, of, it was literally a genocide. Like, yes, yep. this is true. Him, him coming, he's never felt that before. He's always been the one that believed in humans and was mm-hmm. optimistic and didn't want to just exert control over them by force. Right. And, it was and like, Magneto, calm down. I is he, he going to be on his Magneto shit? Yes or no? That's all I want to know. That's what it's I want to know. About, right. It's not about but, being on but, Magneto shit. Even, but, but see, that's the other this. thing. He don't got to go for Mag- Magneto. When, even when him and Magnus see eye to eye, it, it's, it get, it get rough for people. It do. Like, like it don't even have to be like, they fully come to one or the other side. It, Anytime they on the same page, they they start be they start agreeing to shit that's just a little bit different. They they yeah. built different together. Ah! Like yes. don't forget, onslaught is literally what happened when Charles mind white Magneto, yeah, and then the residual combination of their subconscious made us the, one of the dopest supervillains of all time, one of the most powerful ones that was whooping like the Hulk's ass. Like it was so like I. I think the world should be concerned if, if him, Magneto's alive and they start getting along. Not like because he if he come back and still still on that like stop the fighting bullshit, then I think nah. after this tragedy, I just don't think he could be a leader. I don't think people would listen to that shit. Not mutants anyway. They not gonna want to hear. Well, it was just a genocide. No, nigga, we can't get back. No. So get with it. I hope he's not on that bullshit. But I can only go by how you act, not what you say. And. Well, he show he down with colonizers, so he might That's come what I'm back saying. and be like, "Listen, we colonizing Earth, X Men. Okay. We we the ones. I, so he's just been, doing more I've wrong. I've seen okay. some things. Okay, <laughs> we we we've been doing this all backwards. <laughs> I see. I seen some horsehead dudes become gardeners, <laughs> right? Like five minutes ago. We don't have to take no one shit. <laughs> <Mm-mm>. <laughs> but that's the thing, like that. Uh, 
I think, I mean, I'm not sure where they're going with this, but that could lead into their version of the Krakoa storyline because a lot of people argue that people, especially people who don't like the Krakoa storyline, is that Charles Xavier acted wildly out of character in it because he no longer fully believed in the dream mm -hmm. and he associated with villains, etc. But basically, what it is, and that's the thing, like, Tatiana, that's why I'm like, you know, people grow and change and you can't just Absolutely. judge Xavier by what he was when he sees some shit like this. And even Magneto was softening before this. He was you softening. You gotta remember. Mm -hmm. He something, said, I'm it, trying to about, work with humans. But it's something about the way Magneto moves where I, again, I just tend to align with him. Oh, me too. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And I have my doubts. I'm not saying he can't change. I always have, right. I will doubt, I unfortunately, I will always doubt Charles before right. I just believe that he's about to do something. And I think, I think Charles is I off. think yeah, go ahead. with Mac with Magneto's um softening, mm -hmm. and if Charles hardens, mm -hmm. you can get that Krakoa type storyline. Oh, yeah, because they yep. Cause like yep. they I'm, they are so at least the comics I read, I am always more scared of them together than ever yes. when they fighting. Like I'm always like because I feel because like at that point they both vibe off each other, and, and Professor X will sometimes be like. Nah, you're right, Eric. It's time for somebody to learn yeah. a lesson. Yeah. And then so, and sometimes, <laughs> er, sometimes Eric will be like, Charles, you're a savage right now. We can't, we can't <laughs> do that. Remember what I did to that that sub? We can't do that, man. We gotta kind of like I love that vibe of them checking each other because uh, then whatever they decide, when I'm reading it, I'll be like, I agree. I'm down. Like what <laughs> whatever they just, they like, we're gonna give them the medicine, but uh if they don't they stop messing with us, they're gonna stop getting the medicine. So they're gonna have to do what we say. I'm like, yo, balance. that makes sense. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and you know what? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the insulin people do that in America, and I'm like, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> if it's them two though, oh. And this all goes back to Magneto's point. Don't let me let you down. Mm. Mm. So mm. them actually attacking is a form of not trying to be funny. Them letting him down, yep. <laughs> and yeah. so yeah. I could see him coming back and having prop. Like I tried to do this. This is the what? second time he had yeah. this conversation yeah. with the fucking Supreme Court, whoever the fuck the yeah. niggas yeah. were yeah. Yeah. in the sky. And, and, okay. and my thing was. When he saw all those deaths and he snapped and he picked that train up and he started Ooh. whipping with that train, I was like, Whoop oh, train. he going to be a problem if he snaps. Yeah, I, I really hope we get a version of Magneto about to go ham, <laughs> Charles coming back to be like, no, nah, man, we can't do that. And then Magneto convinces Charles like, nah, dog, we are about that life. And Charles go, you know what? You right. That to me is the mm -hmm. scariest shit on the earth. I hope they do that because I want to see Krakoa. Because mm -hmm. Krakoa is not mm -hmm. just the isolationist island idea. It's also the fact that they like pump the world. Mm -hmm. Like they was out here like, oh, and you won't do it. Like, yeah. <laughs> like ben. we come yeah. in here to tell y'all not to announce we together, but to tell to warn y'all, don't fuck around because you will find out you got three times and then mm -hmm. it's over. You know what we need to do, Ben? You know that meme of the black boy that's like whipping the white people in the, in the cotton field? We need to put you need to put Magneto face there, right? Yes. With the whip, and then in the clouds, like you know, op opacity at like twenty. Put Charles like smiling, like <laughs> approving type Charles, shit, and also Charles put Gambit. Gambit. Put Gambit. Put yeah, Gambit. Gambit. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Gambit. Yes. Make that there a T-shirt. Charles and Gambit over there. The whip. The whip is a train. The whip oh, is a train. <laughs> whip oh, that I seen, train. I see, Oh, shout out to our brother, Mr. Morris. I seen him back active on social oh, you media. Oh, yep. put that shit up. Oh, yeah, we might have to hit hilarious. him up. I might, I might have to hit up Mr. Morris. It'll be perfect for that. Uh, um, can, can I say the end now? Yeah, but before, no, one no, last I thing. Can't. Okay. <laughs> no, I can't. I, I guess we, I guess we can no, go on No, continue. It. You had another point. I don't want to push it. Yeah, no, I, I think I'm pretty much, I like, because I'm not going to exactly remember what my point was, other than. That like you were saying, I know we're gonna see Charles push the edge, mm -hmm. and I think we're also about to see Cyclops push the edge. So even if they don't do Krakoa, mm -hmm. they might do no. what, what was the first island they had? Exodus. They mm -hmm. had another island when that's when before Genosha. Cycl yeah, bef no, before Krakoa. Krakoa. Genosha huh? gets blown. Genosha's a whole ass nation. Genosha yeah. gets blown up. A lot of shit happens. 
the X Men get this first island, and that's around the time when uh, mm. Cyclops starts wearing the red X, yeah. and he becomes mm. hardcore revolutionary and really starts, you know, bucking everything. Oh, that's my favorite and version of him. Me too. That's so. I think we're headed down that path, but I think we're also headed down the path where at least maybe by season two or three, you're gonna see, you know, Professor Edge put on that helmet, you know, yeah. and become that. That the nigga. Krakoa version mm-hmm. of them. Yeah. yeah the Boy, problem. I can't wait. And that was my last point about it. That was something else I wanted to shout out Al Ewing because mm-hmm. Al Ewing is one of those people who comes from marginalized communities. Mm-hmm. And Al has written some of the greatest X-Men stories of all time in the mm-hmm. recent run he's been doing or they've been doing. And they had this line about uh, Professor Edge where Magneto is warning Storm about him. He's like, Charles is a good man. So you got to watch out for him because what a good man will do to prove that they're good Good. Mm -hmm. is the problem. And Mm -hmm. that's one of the illest summations of Professor X. Mm. And I really think that applies in this episode. And so I just wanted to shout out Al Ewan because they are, as always, doing, you know, the most Lord's brilliant work on everything they write. That that, that Hulk run was... I mean... And the new different. and the new Thor run is crazy. Yeah. And then X Men Red, I mean Sword into X Men Red into the Resurrection of Magneto is just mm-hmm. it's some of the best X Men ever done. You know, so read that if you haven't. And I mean that's some like if y'all are a fan of Storm, you need to read X Men Red. Like it to me is like the best Storm has been written, and I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's not some of the best Professor some of the best Magneto. Mm. I mean, that's the shit where I was talking about Magneto creates his own heart out of his own power. Mm-hmm, it's like, mm-hmm. shit's fire. Go read it. Now let's All get right. to this ending because that's the big twist. Oh, what a twist. It's not the, <laughs> the reveal, the big reveal. It's not the humans. <laughs> and we were actually wrong, Ben. Like we had said before, we was like, it can't be I, this, nigga. I, I got a question. It can't be sinister. It can't I didn't be get to nigga. listen to all the episode that I wasn't on. But did y'all mention that Bastion was on Forge's wall in that episode? Yeah. Oh. I don't remember. Okay. Well, um, in, when, in the first time we meet Forge, we get a stand of his wall. And there's a bunch of photos on the wall. And in one of the photos, Bastion is obscured. I'll tell you who Bastion is in a mm-hmm. second. But Forge is hugged up with this nigga. Yep. And um, Bastion is, he didn't appear in the original X-Men series because he was created, or the cartoon he's created after that. He's a human sentinel hybrid, right, mm-hmm, Rod? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Nimrod. He, actually, he, actually, Nimrod. he has Nimrod yeah, in him. Yeah, thank you, yeah. yeah, he has Nimrod in him. And that's when Nimrod had actually gone through the Siege Perilous, which is this portal that recreates you into another form. And so it recreated him to Bastion. Mm-hmm. And Bastion was part of the, like, oh, what's that? Operation uh, something. Basically, uh, he Zero was a, Tolerance. Zero Tolerance, where they were just rubbing out the yeah. mutants. Yeah, crazy so, run. Crazy yeah, run. Yeah, crazy run. And so that was another one that a lot of people on YouTube in our comments talked about as being the person behind this. And, you know, we'd mentioned Cassandra Nova. Mm-hmm. I, we'd mentioned Sinister, but like I said... But we was like, no, not that nigga. He, yeah, because... But, but it, he's a small piece. I think that's larger. I it's, think it's so, fashion. too, because it just doesn't fit his M.O. to wipe right. out a bunch of mutants like that. Right. Right. So, I, I think he's he's one of the... Well, even though he's a big bad, he's also a henchman to the I bigger mean, bad. it does. Technically, it the Morlock Ten- tunnels, he did well, wipe them out. Yeah, but they were scrubs. Oh. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. They start small, right? They they yeah, first they I mean, kill a cat up okay. the street. You know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, they yeah. serial killers. Well, well, we had we had like decided like last episode we was like, no, nah, it can't be that nigga. That nigga is involved. Is yeah. he though? And that Bit you top. see the reveal, and 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 it is towards everything we, else we were saying, Ben. What you were saying last night, yes. just the fact that Bolivar's trash. Yeah, he's like, oh, I got you my DNA, and, and yep. this they they use the master mode, and it made this three headed fucking demon, Yo. you know, Evangelion, and then here we are. Yeah, I want to say in the comics when Cassandra Nova, it, y'all Google the image because it's one of the most disturbing shit ever. When you know the same thing happens, she's like, I gave you my DNA. He's like, thanks, I'm good then, and she sticks her her hand through his face. Yeah, in Ooh. some weird like. Uh, and it's one of it's like it's one of those benefits of being a comic book because it's yeah. never explained and nope. it's never like <laughs> how to repeat fuck. it. <laughs> no, yeah, she never repeat. I mean, Cassandra Nova never repeats shit. In, right. in that thing, she just constantly is doing some wild shit, and you're like, she can do that now, and you're right. like, yeah, I guess so. But it's not like 
Like she just sticks her hand through his face, y'all. And it's like it's the weirdest thing. It's like there's no real blood, but her, her fingers are just sticking right. to his face. And she's like, she oh. on some vision shit. Just yeah, doing shit. and she's like, oh, I'm good with you, you know. <laughs> oh. And then that nigga up like that. It's some of the wild. I wish Sinister had done something like that in this episode because it would have. It would have been wild. But you're telling me this is bashing at the at the grand scheme. I don't know who it. No, I, now the Bastion being on that wall is not for Quinkity. You know what I mean? Yes, Bastion mm-hmm. is going to show up at some point in this. But I mean, in terms of all of this, this, this genocide. It's weird. Like, why would our Sinister's main thing is about DNA? He is a human at core, right? He is yes. not a mutant. He's a human who's modified himself with mutant DNA. In some versions, he's even cloned himself to be a mutant. But normally, he's a human who was born in the 1800s and has been obsessed with mutants since then, and has collected their DNA throughout time. So he's not about murdering them all off, you know, like, that's where it's weird, and it's weird that he would side up with even somebody, I don't know, I mean, this could be some pre kakoa shit, though, you know, where they're getting into some weird shit where, I don't know, where he's signing up with humans and AI and all this other stuff. I don't think they're going to get that out there, even if they do Krakoa, so... I I don't get it honestly. I honestly do not get why Sinister would be involved with murdering off Genosha. Do you, Rob, Karen, y'all got any ideas? Because I'm I, I know. don't mm-hmm. because uh, I know he loves collecting all this mutant DNA, and mm-hmm. I know he thinks that like the Summers and Jean Grey, mm-hmm. Jean the perfect is the key. To, yeah, yeah, like something special. So like you yeah. risk killing all that. <laughs> like, but okay, like, remember that. Remember we do see. That he was trying to create cable for the future. Right. Yes. You know, like mm-hmm. he's so in this version, he's more concerned about the future than he is right, about yeah. the present. Possibly. I'm just but it's still like, but genocide, like you said, wouldn't fit the MO of like, yeah, I'm gonna kill all because yeah. keep in mind, that 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 is a sledgehammer. Yeah. Like that wasn't no precision shot. No, no that was so you can't even be like, well, I knew so and so was gonna make it out, so I'm cool. Like, nah, yeah, you sent no, that you joint. No, you no you clue. wanted to kill everybody. So yeah, I maybe, know, maybe he was to make it something. Out. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I really like them jeans. Guess I'm gonna be using them in the next. In the next. Yeah. Uh, Guess I won't uh, need his floating cards anytime soon. Yeah, that's on me, guys. But yeah, I, I will say um, they could also pull like a Okie Doka. He's the middleman. Like he's not. Yeah, that's yeah. Not, yeah. But that's yeah. like a yeah, hell they, of a middleman to be rubbing out. Right. Millions. This show's right been fucking us up though. So yeah. mm, what like, a if you, sucker! Like if you get suck it into killing off a sucker in the well, middle management. Well, was, well, he didn't look like he wasn't in on the plan. I'll say that. Yeah, he, he, he wasn't shocked at all. He was like, "Oh, Bolivar, you'll be fine." <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Bro, so like, well, you're way pool. too calm Ooh, about <laughs> losing seventy five percent of the, uh, your resources." That nigga said, "Now is not the time for fear, doctor." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that comes <Yeah>. later. <laughs> Are you scared? <laughs> he was doing everything but rubbing a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Came out of that darkness. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh man. <laughs> um. So next week, uh, <laughs> next week, uh, they, I would, me and Ben were reading the, the, the like synopsis. Well, mm-hmm. it's not even a synopsis, like two sentences of what mm-hmm. the other extra episode supposed to be. And next week is Psychops focuses the X Men on finding Bolivar trash. Mm. And then when a team locates a Sentinel inventor, they realize they've all been played by a mastermind. So we know it's not trash. It's not the mastermind, mm. as we said. Maybe not even sinister. Mm. And the it's episode the... is Bright Eyes, right? It's called Bright Eyes, yeah. And mm. that's Ro- that's what Rogue calls Cable when they meet mm. in the original series is Bright Eyes. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I'm waiting on him to come back. So he's okay. sliding through the body yeah. sliding yeah. back. He definitely body sliding through. Cause, cause come on, dog. They can't they didn't they didn't throw that in there for no reason. And there's no way they letting Gambit just be dead, bro. He gotta I, he gotta I, go back before it I don't know. I like I like Gambit being dead might be you know the one they don't fix. Damn. I'd be so mad if they've switched up fucking more for Gambit. Like no, right? Especially as no. much as as they know. Like this show has been very like black women and LGBTQ friendly. Mm-hmm. I just can't see killing off Gambit. That's everybody crush. True that. indeed. Hello. Right. He the one right. white boy with some spice, man. They gonna <laughs> you right. right. He's right. a spicy white. I fuck with him. <laughs> right. 
They you gonna right. Be, he sound like he like he know how to like you said. It's everything going back to salt and pepper to taste in that mansion. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody well, else gonna be so bland. They gonna be so unhappy. Right. If they bring Gambit back, somebody else gotta die then. Yeah, I like, do. Uh, yeah. Bye. Are they, are they gonna leave Banshee dead? Yo, mm. that's another. Re- they got. That's another job or dog. They they job Yo, that nigga. He is. By the way, <laughs> Banshee is yeah. trash. No, he's he trash. He gets and I don't, mean like he trash. Trash. I don't mean he's a trash person. Yes. But he his is. he every X Men writer decides Kills he's the nigga. dude to kill <laughs> to prove that one. everyone else is in danger. I don't know. My whole life <laughs> he just been getting washed. He can fly washed. with his he can fly, he fly with his with voice his power voice. somehow that we don't even understand, but that's how powerful he is. And sound, you would think he that's like almost some omega level mutant shit. Yes. And yet Constantly punched in the throat, constantly <laughs> it, sickened, shot. Like, dude is trash. Dog, this <laughs> this nigga Moria took this nigga's face and took the skin off his face and snuck into Krakoa with that. You right. want to talk the lowest of the right. lows? They don't respect you, bro. No respect <laughs> for this nigga on any. This nigga is the what is the X Pac of motherfucking on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's the X Pac of the X Men. <laughs> what about me? Did you call this nigga X Pac? Are you so, are you serious from the <laughs> generation X? What What about uh, me? Uh, what? what about Raven? You yeah, put him as a scrub. That's that's, 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 that's you know, Banshee. Come after you, boy. That right? nigga's a bad. That's Banshee. That nigga gets served a, like Rob said. A, like the nigga loses his powers when Chris Claremont was writing him. He <laughs> retires, you know, from the X Men. Yep. Finally, was, 20 years later, comes back, and every time he comes back, this nigga gets killed. This nigga got right. his face taken off yep. recently. This is in the last few years. Nigga got his face taken off. Nigga turned into a weird-ass version of Ghost Rider. Yep. And then nigga was... No, nigga was a zombie before that. Nigga was a dead zombie on the team. He and they was teaching huh? him... And they made him a teacher at one point, because he was so... Tra- he was so washed. It was like, can't yeah. you just teach, like, the next generation? Because you, like... you can't do... Yeah, like all you do is get beat up. With, so like, tell them how not teach them some lessons from when you got beat up. Oh, no. Those who can't do teach, nigga. That's what they. God, do. they always. I don't know why he did that because he seemed like he could be that scary as hell. A person that could do all that with sound. They was like, nah, homie, nah. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> and then in this joint, he got shot out. The, it was like trying to help somebody else. It was like, pow, gone, <laughs> dusted. <laughs> yeah, I- does it is gone? <laughs> oh my god! All right, Whew. Rod I, and Karen. Yes, you know, thank you as always A for pleasure. joining. Thank us. you for having. Yes. Hey, anytime. It was fun. Yes, it was. Please, please let the folks out there know where they can find you at. Yo, search the Black Guy Who Tips everywhere you get podcasts. Mm-hmm. Our podcast is out there, um, and uh, just uh, I'm on social media. I'm Rodimus Prime on Twitter. I am say that again. That as in D A T. And uh, yeah, just everywhere else, just search the Black Guy Tips on social media. Will come up. Thank you. Word. I actually need to come back on your show so I can talk yeah. about uh, my Jimmy upcoming... Hendrix. Yeah, there comedy. we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, let's do it. I got All you. Right. All right, let me know. We'll do that real soon. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead, Ben. What you wanted to say? <laughs> oh no, that was pretty much it. You know, what I mean, shout out to everybody out there. Make sure you pre-order Jimi Hendrix Purple yep. Haze available now from all great retailers. If you want a signed copy, we still have a very few limited available at anyone comments. I, I mean, got mine. Comics. Oh, thank you very much. I got mine. You all could do it if you are not in Brooklyn or can't make your way over here. Yep. You can do it online too. Anyonecomics.com, I believe it is. Yep. And they will ship it to you when you go on anyonecomics.com. Mm-hmm. Just search for Jimi Hendrix. I did it the other day. It comes right up. The signed version by DJ Ben Amin. That's me. You'll get a signed version with a little special, you know, we're going to have like a book plate or maybe a sticker that's going to be exclusive to this version that you will only be able to get with this version. Not only is it got my signature on it, it's also got some exclusive shit in it. We'll probably throw some Fall Nerd stickers up in there before we ship them out to y'all. You know, all that good stuff. So make sure y'all go over there and order a copy. Yeah, I, I'm a, I can't wait to sit down and sign all them hoes. That's going to be a moment. I'm going to get all that on video. It's going to be real so. again. I mean, it's already real, but it's going to be real again. Yeah, I've actually seen, I actually now have the final, final PDF. I've had it Oh, now. final dot final dot PDF dot version three. <laughs> that ain't going to be no yeah, more. ain't going to be no more. I've made my last edits. I The last edit was made, and it's in the version I have now. So, 
it's fucking crazy to me, y'all. I can't. It's, nah, it's, it's amazing. Still, yeah, thank you, man. It's still like the weirdest. Shout out to Mello. I want to shout out Mello Brown again. He just had an episode of Station 19 that everyone is saying is one of the best episodes of the series. Mm-hmm. And I'm so fucking proud of that dude, man. I read it. Very funny, Mello. Yeah, reading that shit on Twitter was like crazy. To the, like, I was, I, was, I, I text him right away. I was like, bro, it's like blowing my mind to see this. But everybody's like, yo, Mello, you did this shit. This is like one of the best of us in the series. Like, this is <laughs> fucking crazy. And I'm like, yo, that's my dog. You know what I mean? And I, and he wrote that shit. So shout out to you if y'all watching Station 19. You know, make sure y'all check this episode out. Mello just wrote the latest episode, and it's. Just, I told him start the Emmy campaign right away, bro, because you know that's where it's looking. Right away. Yeah. And thank you to everybody who is watching, listening enjoying supporting we love and appreciate you find us my i am tatiana king he is dj ben hameen you can find all of this and all of us at four all nerds all over the interwebs on every platform you can also make sure you subscribe to us on every podcast platform known to man we are there as for all nerds and we does this we do this uh we also have our patreon patreon.com slash for all nerds and the for all nerds shop is coming back go to for all nerds.com so you can get cool tees and cool designs and cool shit of course shout out to everyone who has always supported us and our new listeners as well make sure you are tuned in because we have lots of new episodes that are actually out right now that have dropped this week be ready for that and i don't know what else to say but the, my nigga gam is still gone i cannot believe it i do want to say this we've been working on getting bo de Mayo on the show we're working on it please y'all can y'all Do harass not, him a little bit? <laughs> no, no. I mean, y'all, can, but y'all can harass him, but please, because this really bugged me out. Somebody hit me. Do what? not say that we're going to ask. What? Uh, You're going to find out what happened, right? P- what? Listen. For hell the fuck? No, I'm not. I'm not asking no questions We're not that. promising anything that we're going to say, but people, yeah. I don't think you can stop people from saying, can y'all ask him this? People, y'all can ask all day No, long. but all that type of we stuff. We are not, not... going to be responsible for that type of stuff. You know what I'm there saying? There we go. I, let me say that. Ain't no way I will ever ask a person about somewhere they got fired from. I work in this business. I know what it means. And one, just think about that. Like, at your job, nigga, you want somebody to ask you, yo, what happened when you got fired, fam? Fan pros. Hey y'all, thank you for watching this For All Nerds video, whatever video it was that you just watched. Make sure you hit these buttons below. Press all those buttons, that like, that subscribe, whatever you see right below these fingertips right here. Just hit them, hit them, hit them.